What is up people, my name's Anton, welcome back to September. Today, I am going to show you something which is a little more material texture generation focused rather than creating a specific result. Um, and the reason I say that is because the techniques and texture generation I'm gonna show you in this video um, can really be used for anything. Um, pretty much the reason I say that is because we're going to be generating seamless um, but detailed textures 8k by 8k um, using a load of like varying results and parameters in a software called JS placement um, I mentioned this in a video that I uploaded yesterday uh, whereby I was animating emissive maps um, but today we're going to use it for essentially a bit of like kit bashing material wise if that makes sense so sort of like plugging texture maps in to create varying results um, in this example, I made a motherboard, which is pretty sick. And if we take a look, this is literally no modeling at all. This is entirely the material, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and you have a load of varying parameters in the software, like I said, where you can get like different results. Um, you can access all sorts of stuff, which like randomize them and they're all seamless too. So it's a really cool way of almost shortcut, like hard surface modeling, I'd say. Um, is another use case for this. Uh, you can also, obviously, if you're an artist that leans away from realism, you can literally whack these textures on any material to add a little bit of interest or like seamless detail without having to go through and sort of up your polygon count and model them yourself. Um, so I figured I'd make a video in it just to explain. Um, I seem to remember a lot of people using this in like 2017, 2018, but it still exists and it still works great. So I figured I'd shine a quick light on it. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hop into a new project and sort of just get something started up just to show you the um the possibilities of this so I'll probably i'll probably try to do a few examples but if we start with something like a motherboard like i just did now um we'll get a pretty good idea so if i just grab my i made this quick remesh which is literally a a um rectangle we can paste it into our new project just hop in here and just set our ski scene scale up to something that works nicely um and set this on lock and just start this rendering pop this in aces like we normally do we're ready to start doing a little bit of look development now so the way we've got to think about this is um we are literally just mashing a few materials together that one that we just saw now was a speculative material mixed with metallic metallic material um with a texture applied for the opacity right so if we head over and open js placement i have this installed from a while ago so i would see if i can drop a link below um, for where you can install this but you can see this is the um, interface of the software itself a little bit lacking of detail but if you pop up here you can see our options so you've got five different ones here uh, dot grid wire velvet 2 and classic and if we you can obviously if you download this yourself you can click into it and see what they all do but just as a super quick summary um, this is your interface these are your parameters here that you can change and generate is obviously your number one your number one button that you're going to be pressing um, you have unlimited iterations so i think if you press r on your keyboard that also works um, and they also have different types of like texture generation, right? So this is one of them. This is a classic, I believe. Uh, and with testing this, you can sort of turn down the iteration. So that I'm asking, me guessing the number of sort of like shape generations that you have there. Bear in mind, these are all seamless and 8K by 8K as well. Um, you can change the brightness of certain bits. So you really have total control. Um, you can clamp the brightness to certain parts. So say you're using one as an opacity map and you want it to be um, an alpha you can change that there. You can change the scale of it so you have more detail in certain parts or like edit bits or have, you know, more more like sort of like intricacies. Um, and then you've got all of these, obviously for me to explain each one of these is sort of a little bit useless because you sort of tweak them and they all do different things for different parts of the shapes. But in principle, you sort of get the idea. So if I quickly breeze over the options here, you've got JS placement two. Um, and this was what I used for sort of the roughness of that motherboard that you saw there. So I think what I did is, I mean, if I just generate that one now real quick, you'll see it'll just, it'll just dump it in a folder that you got saved on your desktop. But if you turn the background, background brightness down, for example, um, you can change the scaling and there's, there's quite a lot here. So obviously the iteration sort of controls how many are being created there. If you turn this down, because obviously when you're, when you're mashing materials, you sort of want to have a little more control. You've also got these, so you can change what like pack I guess it's using. I'm not entirely sure what these are, but you can see, I think crap pack looked pretty good. For some reason, if you press R on your keyboard, you can just regenerate. Something like this looks pretty sick. So if you were literally to click save height and then it would save it in your file. Click, I think I only already did it once. We can literally find where that saved. Not that one, but this one. 
uh, and we can drag that into our material. So say we want to create a quick specular material for the sake of explaining, or rather maybe we can take a look and uh, create a metallic material just for, just for a little bit of variation. We can make something a little darker with some sort of golden or colored bits approach to the top. Um, but the goal for me for this video is to show you basically how you can mash those textures together. So if we grab ourselves something which looks good. So I think we were using JS2 there. So if we just to check which ones are actually the ones we made, we can grab maybe these two, drag them in here, see what we got. So it was this one that we just made now. And we can plug that in, for example, the roughness channel to see what that does. So if we drag this onto our material here, you can see if we just grab ourselves a HDRI so we can actually see what we're doing real quick, get ourselves set up <clears throat> super quick. Maybe we can go with something more metallic just to really catch the edges a little bit. We can set this to ACs, take this round a little bit and you can see some of the roughness channels that we've created there. So already you can see it's like a super easy way of texturing, right? Um, if you're lazy or you want to sort of catch certain details, um, you can do something like this. So just quickly save this. Um, we'll go for a sort of motherboard type, a type aesthetic again, because since it's sort of like a sci-fi type of techie texture generation, um, it almost seems like the best option. But the reason I did this is because you could almost, you could almost get super creative and like combine this with the like towel cloth simulation, um, concept or cloth single, like swirling around in the middle, because it, it depends on what geometry you apply it to, right? So if you want to apply this to like a landscape, um, the box that I had in the last video where I timed the lights, something like that, you know, um, you could literally apply these textures onto it and get some bump or some like ever so slight displacement or roughness, um, which, you know, when you're working higher resolution and want to get closer up shots and you find that your geometry is lacking detail, this is sort of a pretty good workaround for that. So if we try something a little different, we can get up to wire here and wire is what I used last episode. So it's this wire generation. You can head to, God, you can try all of these now. So I almost think that this was pretty cool. I'm using this for the first time, but if you turn down the layer count, um, the way you got to think about Octane interpreting a texture like this is if it's set to linear, um, everything white is going to be obviously um, bumped or roughness or whatever parameter it might be. It's going to be, that's that's the maximum value that it'll have. If you have inverted linear, then you've almost got like these sort of midpoints in the middle whereby it will like contrast the ones underneath and it, it, will, it will combine together less, if that makes sense. So it's almost a way of getting a little more detail. Uh, you can add a curve, you can click random, which is almost a pretty sick one here. Um, what I kind of want to do here, just by looking at this, is turn down the thickness ever so slightly, uh, and maybe the amount of wires per layer, because I tend to prefer, um, although it's a, it's a good way of getting detail, I tend to prefer having more control in more textures, so I can sort of wean them about in Octane, because that's kind of the way my workflow does. And you can see step directions here is another parameter, and you can sort of flick these through something that works. So conical looks pretty sick, but it centers it by the looks of it. So if that's not something that you want particularly, you can say it's any and it seems a little more randomized. So if we were to save that height, make sure we're clicking save. You can also edit a name here. So if I put wires, I know that when I go into this folder, instead of having to mess about, I can find exactly where I saved that. Maybe shoot a quick refresh. It seems to have wasted so far. Ah, but it's fine. Uh, and we can drop that into say bump, for example. And then we're gonna have this like wiry bump over the entire material. And already you're getting a pretty decent amount of complexity. Just as an example, I might try this if we just disable the viewport on that and even just grab like a sphere. Uh, maybe make it a little smaller. Make sure that's off entirely. Drag something like that into this. You can sort of see the way that it, well, it looks like it's pretty cool to be fair. You can, say this way, you can see the way that it applies to any geometry and it looks pretty hard. So explore, because you can do a lot with this. Um, if we toggle the visibility on this again, I'll show you how you can sort of just change this a little more. So from what I saw on the sphere, this is pretty reflective, um, which is cool if that's what you want. But if we even want something like this, say, say we're trying to go for like a cinematic shot, you can see the way it sort of like picks up those lights. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look here. Maybe something like this. If we were to duplicate our camera super quick and set this to a focal length of 200 just to zoom it in all the way. You get something like this. 
Maybe we can rotate this up a little more just to really get a sense of depth. And this is where you see that right now it's obviously quite flat. So if you wanted a little bit of displacement on that, you could, of course, grab your, so say this was the one that you wanted. You'd have to duplicate this and potentially color correct it a little bit. But if we added a displacement texture, make sure we're setting this to 8K by 8K and plugging this in, we can get a little bit of rising on that geometry there. So say we turn that down to like five, maybe one. You can see we're catching some rays pretty nicely. And it's exactly where the roughness is, which is pretty cool too. If you wanted to change that, you could do that and almost invert the entire material, but it almost makes it a little too rough because the HDRI is pretty, pretty bright here. So you can do that in a few ways. You can go about turning that down, rotating that round, or what I think might be a better option is if we head in here to where the roughness is and sort of turn the mix down to something like 0.1 maybe the roughness up so that's going to mix the texture with the actual roughness of the piece um, and you'll be able to sort of like separate it away a little more here so say that's something that we're after we can try and rotate this down maybe ever so slightly up whereby we're trying to get a certain certain look so go for something like this maybe we can just move this up a little bit and we're already getting some pretty, pretty cool looks. So the way I managed to get that gold sort of like tweak on the last one uh, was by creating a mixed material with another um, metallic node. But if I started whacking more metallic nodes in this, I reckon it might look a little, little boring. So what I'm thinking of doing is getting a little bit creative. And this is what I mean when you can just kit bash materials together. So if we go here and we create a specular material, for example, literally drag that in here we can start messing about with this, right? So I briefly explained this potentially in a, in a previous video, but the way mixed materials work is obviously you have material one, material two, the amount is by default 0 0.5, and this is a float value that you can drag up and down, basically taking it from one material side to the other. But you can also plug a texture in there or any other sort of like no tree value um, and change what that amount sort of refers to. So what I mean by that is you can also plug a texture in too, right? If I was to plug this wire texture in there, it would apply the texture and sort of like have glass wires if that makes sense right so say we wanted to do that say there is a keep closing js placement but say there is a particular maybe, maybe i can use a texture that i've already generated before um if there's a so we want we want we want a js2 to so say there's something like this hoping that I haven't done this before that one's quite detailed so maybe something a little less if we take something like this looks pretty cool what we can do is, that may be the one that I used before, we can plug that in the amount here, um, get our specular material one, put this in material two here, and if we just lob that on our texture, we can see the kind of thing that we get here. So we're getting these sort of highlights here for where that um, glass material is. So we can experiment with this. It's almost like it's adding a little sense of reflection there. Um, I am inclined to change this amount to the one that I had before because it had a little more detail and I want to sort of generate as much as I possibly can. So if we just take a look, these are both pretty similar, but you know what, hold on, let me see if there's one more. There must be one in this somewhere that I'm specifically after. That's the one I've already got imported. If I drag that a little bit trial and error, let's, let's give this a shot, right? So this is a much more, you can see up there, I'm just looking at this little thumbnail, far more dense. If I was to plug that in, it would almost coat the entire thing, but with a little bit of, a little bit of interest, we could do, we could do something pretty cool. So if we, let's take a look at this real quick. Um, let's see what happens if we were to add a displacement. So just get 8K by 8K. So this is where trial and error sort of comes in. You can plug that in there and you're gonna get displacement based on that glass, right? So wherever you imported that, depending on what your texture is, we get some pretty cool looks. And I'm just like that, obviously without, without the modeling and the texturing and the UV, and you've pretty much shortcut it here, obviously depending on your geometry, you likely have to UV at some point, but you can hop and get your camera here, just if you wanted to up the detail a little bit, you could hop into, for example, depth of field, God, you can untick unfocus, you could just pick a point to focus on, set your aperture to like 20, and you're picking up some really nice little detailed bits. So as I said, um, this varies in what you apply on, 
sort of use this technique and sort of take advantage of it is what I'd recommend. Um, but it's sort of this tip that I wanted to share with you today. Um, I found myself using it a lot for texture generation recently when I wanted something which was sort of like more, more high tech um, and less sort of, you know, decal based or stuff like that. Um, and I found it worked really well for me. So I kind of wanted to share it. So with that being said, thank you everybody for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I understand that these videos have sort of been a little bit lackluster recently, but I kind of wanted to share more specific tips because I feel like when I recorded longer videos, I've just sort of like crammed them all in. Um, and I remember there was a time where I was searching the internet for help on specific niche stuff and couldn't find anything. Um, and I wanted to provide that to the best of my ability. So instead of just doing random creative bits, I thought I'd like split down into things which might um, improve or take your projects to the next level. Um, and I hope you guys can appreciate that. So thank you everybody for watching and I will see you soon in the next video.